watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm Dave Levy. Episode 123, Titanium Accelerator, getting started. Go mobile so you don't have to stay home. Okay, in this show, uh, John Jardine comes back on, and he's been on the show uh, many times. And he's an IBM champion. He works out of the South Africa uh, area for uh, Ukavuma. And uh, here's his contact information. He does a lot of uh, training and mentoring, uh, but he especially does a lot of mobile development, as we're going to talk about in, in, in this show here. But before we get into the show, I, I do have to send uh, John a congratulations because uh, fairly recently he uh, and his wife had a, a, a baby named Luca. Uh, so congratulations for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to the future developer getting on the show. Okay, anyway, so today John is going to talk about Accelerator. Um, so you, you may or may not have known there's this product out there called Titanium Accelerator, which is free. And it's a way to basically use your HTML and JavaScript skills that you've probably uh, started to build up with XPages into making local apps for a smartphone like an iPhone or an Android. So this show is not an XPage uh, focused show really. It's just a uh, kind of a way to start using some of your skills and other technologies. Uh, but John does plan on doing more shows, which which I do hope and I believe uh, uh, will have uh, some uh, X pages flair for for the back end database. Uh, but first, you have to just start uh, getting your feet wet with Accelerator. So John has a blog series uh, over at his website, which he's going to go over with some pre-posts, if, if you look like some written uh, documentation down there. And uh, I've talked him into doing some videos to go along with that uh, blog series um, for Notes 9. So with all that being said, let's go to the demo and start learning about Titanium uh, Accelerator. Hi there and welcome. I'm John Jardine from Ukuvuma, and this is Chapter 3 of my Accelerator mobile development blog series. The purpose of today's video is to provide you with a quick visual overview of where to find my blog series, how to sign up for an Accelerator account, download the Titanium Studio, as well as the iOS and Android SDKs. I'll then give you a quick overview of the Titanium Studio and we'll end off by creating a default uh, blank mobile project that we'll be using for the upcoming videos. Alright, so let's get started. First off, if you go to my blog site johnjardine.ukavuma.co.za you'll see a link towards the top on the right hand side called Accelerator Mobile Development Series. When you click on that link you'll be taken to this page and it will show you a number of blogs that have already been uh, published uh, categorized under Season 1. We are busy now with uh, Chapter 3, Let's Get Started, but the important one to take note of is installing Titania. If you click on this, I give you pretty detailed rundown of where to find all the necessary videos or guides on how to get Titanium installed as well as the iOS and Android SDKs configured. Um, it, it is, it's not a tedious job, very easy to get up and running, it's just a few things that you need to do on your side. So the important thing over here is first off register with Accelerator and I give you a link over here that will take you to a page like this where you can go and sign up for an Accelerator account. Once you've done that you can then go and download the Titanium Studio by clicking on this link which will take you to this section on Accelerator.com. Uh, depending on whether you're using Mac, Windows, Linux uh, you can click on the relevant links and you'll see that from here already there are other additional links on how to configure your environment for mobile and to start creating your first app. Uh, I, I can't stress this enough, there's more than enough online material just to get you started on Accelerator Titanium. So I chose to not re, uh, reinvent the wheel and just to provide you with what you needed to get up and running. Okay. So once you've downloaded Titanium Studio, then you would need to sign into Titanium Studio with your username and password and that will take you to a similar interface uh, inside the studio. You'll see the dashboard will always load whenever you start up uh, Titanium Studio for the first time and this is a this is a pretty cool dashboard. If you take a look at the getting started page you'll see that you can go and set up your themes uh, for, for your uh, environment and you can also go and 
configure the relevant SDKs. Now you'll see over here that I've got ticks showing me that my Android and iOS SDKs are up and running and ready to go. Uh, if I click on iOS SDK, on the right hand side is where it will either tell you everything is fine or provide you with links or actions on how to get it up and running and update it. For example, if you go to Android SDK, the Android SDK is installed correctly, yay, I'm happy about that, but here's a button that will go and allow you to update the Android SDK for new versions or whatever it is that you need. Uh, so it is pretty easy and you'll be surprised how much you can do from within Titanium Studio versus separately uh, as separate installs. Uh, I know on a Mac uh, the moment you try and get Android uh, SDK installed, Mac does prompt you to say, listen, you need a Java runtime environment, do you want to install it? And I, I just click yes, Mac does pretty much everything for you. Uh, but on Windows, I didn't get the same result. I had to manually go down, download the Java runtime environment and install that first before I got my Android environment up and running. So please take a note of that. Okay. Um, in Titanium Studio, another thing that I recommend doing is going to the Help menu and selecting both Check for Titanium Updates as well as Check for Updates over here at the bottom. Uh, depending on what extra plugins you would want installed, like for example I use Team Foundation Server for Source Control, uh, between these two they'll provide me what with, with all the necessary updates required uh, for Titanium Studio and for any of the plugins that um, run with it. Okay, so please go and check these frequently. Um, I, I know that they, you also get prompted when updates occur, but I like to just go myself and make sure that everything is always up to date. All right. So let's just quickly take a look at the Titanium Studio. The dashboard again, a, a great place to get started. If I go here to the Learn tab, you'll see that here are the videos for preparing your mobile development environment. So uh, earlier on, I had a couple of examples of uh, checklists of what to do in order to get uh, your mobile environment up and running but yeah he has a six minute video on how to do it so he has another one on get started in the development workflow and he has one on importing sample projects they are not long videos I highly recommend going through them just to just to further understand titanium studio and how to get started all right and then at the bottom over here there's a lot of resources uh, on guides, API docs, I use API docs all the time, it's my it's my go-to uh, link. Alright, so in the event that the dashboard is closed, you don't always want it open, I mean I'd like to clean up my environment. If you ever want to go back to the dashboard environment, you can see this little red house over here, you can click on that, which will open up your dashboard page again. Alright, then next up, your, I use the extended studio perspective. Uh, um, this will probably open as a default on your side, but if it doesn't, I highly recommend it. And you can go to window, uh, open perspective. It won't show the year. If it doesn't, click on other, and there should be a studio extended perspective that you can select. Another way of changing perspectives is on the right hand side of here. Uh, currently it just shows icons but you can go and show the text as well. It just helps me better because I understand what, what the icons are and what they use for allowing me to switch between the necessary perspectives. Okay. So again there's the studio extended perspective. On the left hand side of here you've got your project explorer and you've got your app explorer. So I think what would happen is you would start off with an App Explorer but there would be nothing inside it. The difference between these two is that the App Explorer you go and select a physical project and then it will only show you the folders and files contained within that project. Whereas the Project Explorer will show you all your projects um, that you have created uh, in Titanium Studio. Alright, allowing you to see a list of all the projects and, and navigate within their folders. Um, so this is sometimes a good place depending on how much referencing that you need to do but otherwise I like to go over here and use the App Explorer. Alright, um, I'm not going to focus too much on anything else over here so what we'll do from here is we'll start uh, we'll end off this video by creating a blank mobile project that we're going to use for our up and coming videos. So to create a mobile project what we need to do is go to the file menu and say new, oh, excuse me mobile project. Once we've selected that, you'll see that it defaults to a default alloy project. 
Now we won't be working on alloy now, we'll, we'll t attack this beast later on. For now we're going to click on classic and we're going to create a default classic project. So click on the next button. Next up we'll give our project a name. I'm going to call it Accelerator uh, S1 for Season 1 and the app ID is like a reverse website address so we'll start with com dot Ukavuma, you can put your company name over there, dot accelerator dot s1 and then yeah why not dot ukavuma dot co dot za we're going to use the latest SDK version which is 311 GA I'm going to deselect mobile web, I'm only going to focus on iPad, iPhone and Android for now great so I can click on the finish button. This will take a few seconds and then you'll see on the left hand side under App Explorer then your new project will become the project it gets opened uh, here in the left. You'll also see that a window opens by the name of TI App Editor. This is the TI App.xml that you see over here. So just taking a quick step back Accelerator S1 this is your project and these are all the folders and files contained within that project. The TIAPP.XML is your application preferences and you'll see that it's already populated most of what we've done by creating a new mobile project and you can just go and clean certain things up like providing a proper uh, publisher name and surname or setting up the copyrights and a couple of descriptions. And you'll see at the bottom as well here are our deployment targets. Great. So once we've done with that you can close that it will ask you to save yes okay so you can always go back into the tiapp.xml to go and manage all your preferences again um, this is the UI version of the app editor you can go to the source version or the source tab uh, which contains a lot more settings for for your application uh, when we later on in this series we'll we'll start dabbling in this area okay but we can close this for now the next file, or the next file that was opened as a default over here, is the app.js file. And this is located under your resources folder. So when I expand the resources folder, th this is where we will develop and this is where we will add all our images, our codes, our style sheets, folders, pretty much anything that we're going to do inside this application will happen inside the resources directory. So the file that's currently open is the app.js. Now, this is a special JS file because when your application is run on an emulator or on the physical device, on startup, it, this is the file that gets executed first. So any code inside the app.js is the code that will get executed first and once off. Alright, so it's a very important uh, file. From here, you can either build all your elements uh, your 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 controls uh, reference other JS files to to launch new windows this this year bottom line is the starting point and f from here you will move into other areas of your code okay now even though we selected a default template uh, tit what titanium have done is they've gone and already set up a default interface which is a tab group with two tabs each containing a window and each of the windows containing a label. So what we'll do is let's let's go and preview this in in one of the emulators. So in order to do that, I will go and click on the run icon over here and it will ask me where do you want to run? Do you want to run Android, iPad, iPhone or do you want to run on the physical devices? All right, for now we're just going to use the simulator. So let's start off with the iPhone simulator. I just go and select that. So here's our default app loading and you'll see here's your tab group. The tab group is, you can't see it, but it's the container for everything. So you can see your two tabs at the bottom, tab 1, tab 2. Each tab has a window and each window has a label in the center. And that's all the code that you see inside this app.js file. So let's go and do the same for an iPad. I go and select on run and I go and choose iPad simulator and there's our iPad simulator launching you'll also notice it might be a little bit big um, too 
vertically to fit on your screen uh, what I usually like to do is I'll go hardware and I'll say rotate left put it in landscape mode and I can see a lot more without having to scroll so here we are same story um, two tabs at the bottom two windows and each window got a label with some text great so on our final let's go and preview on the Android emulator so here's our application now I use a little bit of movie magic when it comes to uh, running these simulators because they can sometimes take a little while especially the Android emulator um, there are a couple of tricks to make it run much faster and I'll explain that in the up and coming videos but for now here we go the, here's our application with two tabs and you'll notice they're on top this is because it conforms to the Android's uh, defaults when it comes to human interface guidelines but there's tab 1 and tab 2 with the windows I'm window 1 and I am window 2 okay so I'm gonna leave it at this for this video uh, in the next one we'll start with windows and tab groups uh, that, that'll be a great video to get you to understand how those two fit together and what you can do with them but uh, I've hoped that this was valuable to everyone and until next time enjoy and that's the demo. I thank John for coming on. And I, I know I'm personally looking forward to, to more in this series because I want to get in the accelerator myself. And if you have any questions for me uh, on non accelerator related things, uh, here's my contact information. And I thank you for your time.